Welcome back to Ask Rip, uh, where we uh, intentionally answer your questions from the web about stuff that doesn't normally get dealt with on the board. Why does it not normally get dealt with on the board? Because it's stupid, usually. So, to that effect, to that end, SDF underscore one underscore beta asks, how often do you browse the cesspool that is E and P? About as often as I clean out the cesspool, the septic tank at my house, which is to say never. You know, I built that house in 1999 and 17 years later, I've never had the lid off of that septic tank. Isn't that amazing how those things work? You don't have to maintenance if they're, if they're constructed correctly. Uh, you don't have to go down there and look at it. And the same is true of E and P. Now, Matt Robertson asks, please get political, Rip, and share your assessment of the political candidates for president. Who would make a pre better president? Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, <laughs> Bernie Sanders, <laughs> or Gary Johnson? Well, all right. If these are my four choices, you guys sure you want to hear this shit? You know, Sullivan, go ahead and turn it off. I know you're not interested in hearing my opinion of people that don't understand economics. Uh, of these four people, Donald Trump is a dangerous, egomaniacal lunatic. Hillary Clinton is Satan. It's the most vicious, evil, vile person to ever run for the presidency of the United States. Bernie Sanders is a simpleton. He's an old fool who may possibly believe the silly bullshit that he suggests. And Gary Johnson, uh, of these four people is probably the most reasonable man running for president, but he has chosen to throw in again with the idiots at the Libertarian Party, who I donated money to for 30 years, and uh, uh, finally grew out of, and will not be considered for the job because they will not let him talk. If they don't let you talk, you don't get to participate. The system is such that those of us that were idealistic and voted libertarian and contributed money to the Libertarian Party and Libertarian candidates for years, uh, have to at some point come to the adult understanding that this is all bullshit. This is all bullshit. These, uh, the Libertarian Party is not going to be allowed to participate. And uh, be allowed by who, you ask? Well, you know as well as I do by who. All right. Um, of these four people, I'm probably going to have a choice to vote between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. I will reluctantly vote for Donald Trump unless he does something even more idiotic than he's already done over the next six months. We're here in May of 2016. Those of you watching this podcast in the far distant future, where I'm appearing as a hologram here in the middle of my track, a three-dimensional hologram where you can walk all the way around in the far distant future, will say, well, Bernie Sanders wasn't such a bad president. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. My guy early on was, uh, was Rand Paul because I'm a straight, right down the middle libertarian and his his uh policies and positions were quite reflective of mine unfortunately rand didn't have the personality to get out of that that group of people there were several good people in there ben carson's a good man uh carly fiorina is a tremendous candidate i agreed with virtually everything she said she had some problems with her but no one's going to be perfect uh I have a lot of problems with Donald Trump uh, right now. I may have even more problems with him later, but right now I have far more problems 
with this vicious bitch, Hillary Clinton. And uh, I have a feeling that here in the middle of May of 2016, I think Donald Trump can beat her easily. Uh, I don't think there are enough disgruntled women and union members who will actually do what the leadership tells them to do to elect Hillary Clinton president. We'll see if I'm right. We will, in fact. All right, now, enough of that shit. Chase Lindley, what in the hell did you allow Chase Lindley, our member in here, to ask a question like this for? Why did you, all right, ask Rick, who would you fuck, marry, kill? <laughs> Commas, fuck, marry, kill. How does he know what fuck means? I don't know. I thought he was like 15. I did too. I thought he's 15. They don't know what that is. You think? Okay, well, he's entitled to ask then. Uh, out of Oprah, Hillary, and a dirty used up hooker from Scott Street. That's the most I've ever heard him talk. And yeah, he doesn't normally <laughs> put that many words in a sentence. Uh, Oprah. It's easy. Nothing wrong with Oprah. Oh, was that all? Yeah, that was the three choices Hillary, Oprah, or a dirty used up hooker from Scott Street. I think Oprah. The, I, think the idea I don't have a problem with Oprah. I think the idea is you have to pick one to marry, one to fuck, and one to kill. Oh, oh, is that what the question? Let me read this again. Who would you fuck, Mary Kill? Uh, used to hook her from Scott you Street. Do all three to I'd kill Hillary. Oprah. I'd kill Hillary. I'd, uh, I don't know. I'm not, not into hookers anymore, Chase. It's been a while. Does Chase know how old I am? Uh, probably, he probably thinks you're 35. He may have a charitable <laughs> assessment of my time here on the planet. Uh, I'm not going to deal with a hooker. Uh, you kill Hillary and you marry and fuck Oprah, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know if this one is of broadcast quality. You'll have to make the call on that. Okay. Next. What is the greatest threat to American masculinity? T-R-V-S-L-L-N asked that question. What is the greatest threat to American masculinity? That's an actual question, isn't it? Uh, well, I think if you think about it just, just uh, a second, the first thing that pops into your head is popular culture is the greatest threat to American masculinity because it's not being rewarded anymore. In fact, it's being act actively, actively, rather actively discouraged. Uh, previous podcast, previous Ask Rip, we talked about the Olympics. All the testosterone things are being actively discouraged. Now, you look at any advertisement on TV uh, or the radio and you and you uh, listen to the copy and men are almost always with almost without exception portrayed as morons like my favorite one is the the assertive wife comes in honey we're gonna order new blinds for the house from blinds.com or blindster.com or whatever one of those eight or ten websites there are and the husband goes, oh, well, honey, what if they don't fit? Well, honey, we can send them back if they don't fit. We'll just send them back and they'll take them back. Well, but it was always so much trouble to put them up and everything. And I, I just don't know. So don't we should hire somebody to do it. And she said, no, no, honey, just calm down. Well, I can handle this. I'm a strong woman. And, you know, that kind of thing repeated over and over and over. And it's... uh. uh it, it's all throughout advertising, it's throughout uh, television shows, and uh, you know, there's the occasional action adventure movie where the guy is portrayed uh, uh, as a strong male with a gun by an actor in Hollywood who's opposed to, to handgun ownership for some reason. And uh, you know, so you get some of the, you know, I, I, I tell you what I think is the popularity of the superhero movies especially the Captain America series, is a direct response to this very thing. You know, I know very few people who don't think that Winter Soldier 
Captain America, The Winter Soldier was one of the best movies of all time. I agree with that. It's one of the top ten movies that have been made. I've watched it four or five times. It's just enjoyable to watch Chris Evans play that role and uh, play the role of a masculine American male. And, you know, maybe I'm a bitter clinger to the past. You know, I am ancient. I am 60 years old. I know that's, I know that's hard to believe. but I'm 60 years old. And, you know, I was raised during a time where the thing you're talking about right here was the norm. But, uh, you know, I tell you, um, upon further analysis, the greatest threat to American masculinity are American males who are letting go in order to acquiesce. Don't do that, boys. That's not good. One more. Okay. This one actually is a serious question. It may merit some time, but maybe not. I haven't read it yet. It's just the first few words. So it says, that the Astro Boy 483 says, I'm 59 and had a right total hip replacement 14 months ago. Our full squats rewards higher than the risks. How would you balance the two sides. I'm sticking to leg press until I hear your answer. Well, what you do is, Astro, is, uh, yeah, we've had people do hip replacements and squat, you know, significant percentage of their previous PRs. Uh, we've been dealing with this for 15, 20 years, ever since they started doing the surgery. The surgery is pretty good. It's much more resonant than some of the surgeons understand. You adapt to it real well. And, uh, I would say that what you're going to do is you're going to get, you know, six weeks or so post-op until the implant has incorporated, and then you're going to start with your leg presses like you're doing now till you get a good range of motion back, and then you go over to the rack and you take the empty bar out of the rack and you take 45 pounds down and you do a set of five with it and then you do a couple more sets of five and then you go up to 55 and then you go to 65 and it begins to feel a little uncomfortable and you stop right there. And then you come in the gym next time and you go to 70 so, and then the time after that 75 and then 80. In other words, you're going to do a repeat of the novice linear progression. You're going to add weight and you're going to use perfect balanced form so that uh, Nothing is necessary to balance the two sides because the squat does that. That's why we squat, because there is balance for the two sides. The strong side's not working as hard. All the injured parts of the injured and repaired side are being forced to do their job as they heal. And as a result, everything will be fine. In a few months, you'll be out of pain. You'll be able to sleep again and uh, You'll be glad you actually went ahead and had that trashy old hip replaced with a shiny new titanium ball. And uh, uh, I think you just, you know, have some courage and go in there and don't be afraid for it to hurt a little bit. Don't tear it up by doing stupid stuff like our friend Phil in here does with his knees. But you just treat it like you're training. Treat it like you're training. Just train it, just like you did before, and everything will be fine. I think it's probably enough today. People don't want to watch this more than 15, 20 minutes. And why would they? You know? So we'll see you next time. Thanks.